one may well feel that if the soul has not yet found itself faced in utmost seriousness, by the problem of free will, or necessity, it will not have reached its full stature. Welcome to the study group. I will start with a brief introduction to chapter 1, Conscious Human Action. The philosophy of freedom begins with the question. Are we free in our thought and action, or inescapably controlled by necessity? The common belief is that we are free, at least some of the time. Freedom is implied in many of the things we say, and many of the attitudes we take. Suppose tomorrow is a holiday. You are considering what to do. You can climb a mountain or read a book. You can fix your bicycle, or go to the zoo. At this moment, you are watching this video. You are free to stop now or continue to watch, right? Many scientists consider free will to be an illusion. Science sees no reason why the uniformity of natural law would be broken in the field of human action and thought. The fact that we are physical creatures in a physical world, subjects us to well-established natural laws, including cause and effect. Free will is an illusion, that results from not being aware of the hidden causes, that determine our action. Laws of behavior are established by natural factors such as genes, brain chemistry, and hormones. Behavior is also conditioned by social factors, such as upbringing and cultural experience. According to science, the causes that determine human behavior are far too complex to ever understand. Between us, and our action, is natural law. But if we are automatons, we would simply do whatever we were pre-programmed to do. Without free will, we cannot hold people morally accountable for their actions. How can we judge others, if they are not responsible for their actions? Moralists believe we must have free will, in order to do righteous acts. The Divine Creator, gave us free will, it's as simple as that. The downside of such a resolution, is that it is not based upon knowledge. It is faith. Free will, is to be used to choose between good, and evil. According to moralists, the real choice we have is to obey divine laws, or not obey them. If we are unsure of what to do, we have spiritual leaders who will tell us what pleases or displeases, the God who rules the world. Between us, and our action, is divine law. Others use endless distinctions, to explain how human freedom can be compatible with natural, or divine, determinism. The only thing that could actually support the strong free will, that is commonly believed in, is self-origination. The reasons, or laws, for why we act, do not originate in nature, or God, they originate in ourself. Between us, and our action, is a law that we originate. The philosophy of freedom tackles the age-old question of freedom, in a new and unique way. As the title of chapter 1 states, we are interested in conscious human activity. By retrospectively examining our thoughts related to the deed, we can find the ideas that guide our action. And if these reasons originate from the world of our ideals, where only we can determine them, then our actions are free. We originate an ideal principle, 
from the world of our ideals, and creatively translate it into a clear picture of what we want to bring about. What we have envisioned, determines our action. This is important, for without self-determination there can be no individual growth, or personal responsibility. The history of the discussion of human freedom, is rich and remarkable. Hundreds of explanations of what it means to be free, have been distinguished. Let's start our discussion, by asking each of our panel members, what kind, of freedom do you value the most? In other words, what is the freedom that you are striving for?